Hello and welcome to uh, sunny Suffolk, a sunny bit cold Suffolk but it's still working quite well for us weather-wise. We thought we'd do a van review, um, this is a uh, Naus Live Eye 700 MEG, we've had this since last August but unfortunately due to lockdown this is only the third time we've been out in it and wanted to give it a try first to make sure that it's, uh, you know, we understand it and everything works around it before we, get, we did a review. As you'll see from the first uh, look it's a A-class motorhome. The 700 series means it's seven and a half metres long. It's got uh, a weight or a plated maximum weight of uh, 4,250 kilograms, which gives us a 600 kilogram payload. An A-Class, basically, uh, it, the difference thing with an A-Class, it's basically a caravan on top of a, of a chassis and an engine. And this has got a Fiat Ducato engine, 2.3 uh, litre, 140 brake horsepower, six speed, manual gearbox. It's also got a Fiat chassis and not uh, the chassis that are normally on these engines which are an Alco chassis. You'll first see from the front bit is this big windscreen and the point about this big windscreen is apart from it giving a fantastic view from uh, both when you are driving, but equally when you're parked up is that they are quite large and the trick here is to make sure that whilst all insurance policies have windscreen cover for an A-Class you have to make sure that it's sufficient value to cover a broken windscreen. So these can be up to £10,000 depending on the size of the vehicle. So one's not quite that, but it certainly was up to £5,000 to replace this. On our first day out, we had a stone chipping in the windscreen, which did repair because it wasn't in line of sight and it is repaired very well, but it's just something about that. Now, the other thing on the front is you don't have a bonnet as such. This whole panel here just lifts off and drops down and in it, you can get to water, oil, etc., etc., under the bonnet. So walking, walking around the van, uh, we'll see we've got 16-inch um, uh, alloy wheels on it. Uh, you'll see on this side, on the driver's side, there is no door. That's not uncommon on a European A-Class van. Uh, there is a hab door down this side and there is a door on the passenger side, but there's, a, there's no door on this side. Uh, got a sliding window, which is quite a useful feature in, in, in practice, and a set of windscreen, a set of mirrors, should I say, which is split so you can look at the different tilting angles on there to get uh, near in and far distance work. So walking down the van, um, electric step on the hab door, uh, toilet here, it's a Dometic toilet, same system as Thetford, just the first time we've not had a Thetford toilet, but, uh, but it works the same and really we don't need to talk much about more about toilets, I don't think. So moving down this side of the van, um, Gas compartments, enough room for two six kilogram uh, propane butane gas canisters in there. That works quite well. Uh, one of the big features of this van is a big garage. Uh, you may not be able to see too well for lighting, but I've got a picture that is lit up with it on, but it's got two electric bikes in there and quite a lot of kit, as you can see. Uh, not quite as tidy as it was when we first set off, but, uh, but there you go. Moving around this side to the rear, Got some quite no, nice um, decals on the rear. Um, rear view camera is quite good on this. Um, what I particularly like is these lighting. They call it the Naus Cat Eye Evolution. It is uh, a bit like the Jetsons on the back. It's quite quite trendy. Um, works quite well. So moving around to this side of the vehicle, that's into the garage again. And vents for the fridge freezer and the fridge. So what I think is quite a good feature on this vehicle now, this service hatch. Um, all the other vans and caravans we've had before have had a whale feature that plugs in with this. It's just um, uh, to undo this um, uh, top here, stick the hose pipe in, fill up. This bit here allows your access to clean. This, this It's a service hatch. Just here we've got uh, wastewater and, and freshwater valves to open and close for draining. The side by side and draining parallel pipes straight underneath. The electric comes through the floor, which means that you can't, uh, somebody can't un interfere with your van while you're away from it. Uh, hot water tank, water filter, all in one place, really convenient. Previous vehicles we've had, have had a pipe in one place, a pipe in another. With this, you can drive straight over the motor arm service point, undo your valves, completely drain off, both from the, uh, the fresh water, the gray water, and also the hot water tank. So moving back up, we've got uh, diesel and add blue as you'd expect, as per normal, and a door on this side, um, which is useful, uh, particularly for 
Uh, it might seem a bit strange to be on the passenger side, but when you're in Europe and got to deal with toll booths, etc., it's useful sometimes for the passenger to be able to get out. Wing mirrors again, uh, and we're back to the corner where we started. So we'll go inside now and I'll let Helen show you the inside. Hello and welcome to the inside of the motorhome. We'll start at the back and we'll work our way forwards. Let's go and have a look round. So this is the bedroom. You can see on the back wall, we've got three storage cabinets. Quite big, able to take lots of clothes or whatever you want to put in there. If you look round to the right hand side, and on the left hand side, there's cubby holes as well where you can put things to store. In the roof, we've got the um, high key roof light. And again, on there, there's, you can open that up. Um, there's a fly screen and there's also a blackout blind as well. The strange thing in this van is that there isn't a window on, the, on this side of the, of the bed, but there is on the far side. And again, we've got fly screens and we've got blackout blinds on there as well. The bed set up at the minute is two single beds. If you wanted to make it into one double bed, then there's a pull out um, extension that comes from underneath with a small set of ladders and you can make this into a really sizable double bed. Martin and I are both quite tall and we fit in that without no problems whatsoever. Storage wise again, under the beds, You've got two wardrobes down here, just a press button, open them up, a light comes on and there's plenty of storage under there. If you can't get anything in there that you need to, what you can do is just lift it up from here and that gives you access onto the beds as well. So it's a great setup, really useful, really user friendly. Let's go into the bathroom. I guess there's not much to add to uh, motorhome bathrooms. Um, our previous van was eight and a half metres, sorry, eight metres long, and we've lost half a metre, and this is where the compromise is, is in the toilet. So, still pretty um, big enough for us. The Dometic toilet that we mentioned from the outside, nice little uh, vanity sink, and a great shower, which is a surprise me actually, because it's really powerful. Storage-wise, you've got um, a mirror here, and you just press that, and you've got storage inside there as well. So there's plenty of room for everything, but this was the one compromise that we had in this van, was the size of the bathroom. So, into the kitchen, we've got a Thetford oven and grill. Uh, we haven't used this, we tend not to use the oven and grills in the uh, motorhome, we tend to either use the hob or the uh, Kadak outside. Fridge freezer, really good size for both of them. Um, this is one of the natty ones where, if you're in the kitchen, you can open the fridge from this side or if you're in the bedroom and you want to get access to the fridge you can open it from this side as well so that's a, a bit of a quirky feature there is another bit of a storage cupboard here and um, to be honest it's just big enough to put some coats and things in not anything um, you're not going to get a lot of hanging space in there moving further forward into the kitchen we've got a three gas ring hob no electric plate but that's not caused us a problem whatsoever. We tend just to cook on the gas anyway. Plenty of storage up here and three drawers underneath. These are soft clothes and give you, again, plenty of storage for all you your kitchen utensils that you're gonna need. Sink with obviously your tap and then under here, again, another storage cabinet that goes all the way to the back of the van. So you do need quite long arms to get right to the back, but it will take a, a, a lot of food or anything else that you want to put in there. So now let's move into the dinette. So this van has got the Truma heating, which is blown air and hot water. We were a little bit dubious about blown air heating because we'd had the Aldi wet system on the old van, but I have to say we've got absolutely no complaints with it whatsoever. It's really easy to use. Um, and it does the job and we've tested it in quite cold temperatures because we do use the van all year round. We've then got the Naus um, computer system that operates the van, master switch, 12 volt and that basically does everything else. It tells you how much waste water and how much battery power that you've got as well. Moving on to the hub door, um, it's a single opening door so it's not a, um, a stable door and it's got two useful little hooks in there as well. This apparently is a waste bin 
Um, I've never used it as a waste bin. At the minute, it's got it's full of all the dogs' things, which I think is a little bit easier. And you've got a magazine storage rack as well, just there. Apparently, this is a very natty umbrella storage thing as well. So useful for English inclement weather. Moving round into the dinette, again, we've got more storage up above here and, ab and above here. And if you move the seat cushion from here and you lift it up, that will take, that is for full use of storage. So again, it's a great place to put things. This has got four belted seats because it's a four berth. So you've got your driver's seat, your passenger seat, and your other two belted seats are on this far side here. Under this seat, you've got all your batteries and all your electrics. There's not much room to put anything under there, but on the far side, you can remove this seat cover and there's another lift up storage compartment. Now that's going to be great for things that maybe you don't need to get ready access to, or if you've got some valuables that you want to really put out the way. Moving on to the floor of the vehicle in the dinette, you can either have this segment in or you can take it out. We've decided to leave it in and it's another useful piece of storage underneath as well. The table moves up and down and it moves front to back. So depending on how many people you've got around the table, you can move it to fit the people that are sat there. I've always been against a dinette um, and it took a little bit of persuading and it wasn't until I came in the van and I looked at this table and I looked at the setup that I really liked it. Now we, are, um, we like to read, we like to, we do a lot of, Martin does a lot of his photo editing and having the table here has been a massive asset to us. So I'm, uh, I'm absolutely sold on having a dinette now. So this is a four berth, so where's the other bed? It's up here. All you need to do to get access to this bed is these front seats, the, these, the back rests drop down and then by releasing the clip here and the clip here with literally one pull and pulling that lever forward, the whole bed drops down. It's really easy. I'm pleased that it's not electric because we've heard of a few electric ones that, that break um, and then you can't get access to the bed. But this is really quite straightforward to use. Martin and I are quite tall. Um, Martin's just shy of six foot, I'm five eight, and we found that with this bed is ample big enough, as is the two beds in the rear in the rear bedroom as well. We can fit into those without any difficulty whatsoever. So again, in the roof up here, there's another roof light, and there's also storage for magazines. Going on to the, the front of the cab, you've got some great spotlights in here that you touch on, touch off. The really nice thing I like about this is that at night time, when you're in bed, even though these are switched off, you might just see there's a little blue hue coming from them and it actually lights up the front of the van. So when you want to go to the toilet in the night or get something out of the fridge or come to the sink, these do give you a little bit of ambient lighting. The front of the van is no different probably to the majority of other motorhomes. You've got your media set up, access to your sat nav, um, and everything else that you can that you can think of here as well there's a nice little cubby hole here now I like to use this for, for sweets and sort of nice snacks and things like that unfortunately the minute all it's got in it is camera equipment surprise surprise and again there's a little bit more storage on the floor down here so if you don't want anything to roll around you can put it in there and it's all quite secure so that's just about it for our motorhome. We hope you like it as much as we like it. Um, thanks for watching. If you've liked it or you've got any questions, please put it in the comments if you want any clarification and we'll get back to you. Um, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, and you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And thank you for doing life with us.